Hello and welcome to We Met Behind the Castle. I am starting a podcast because I feel like it will go hand in hand with the YouTube videos that we do, the TikTok videos, and I want to give you as much information as I possibly can. And I felt like a podcast would be a great start to get that going. So here is the podcast. This is the very first episode. You're not missing anything. This is the first one that I've ever launched. I'm going to put some of these clips up on TikTok and I'm going to put the whole uh, podcast video up on uh, YouTube as well. So definitely check it out. If you're interested in seeing what my TikTok's all about, it's basically shortened clips of what's going on inside the theme parks and then some other information that I can share video and pictures with you. Um, but definitely head over to Wave Out Behind the Castle over on TikTok and check that out. We're here on YouTube. We're going to start doing a weekly podcast to round up and wrap up everything that we can possibly talk about with some of the theme parks, some of the news. We'll be jumping all over the United States, all over the globe, talking about different things that we see throughout the theme parks that are exciting. But we'll also cover other things uh, here in Central Florida. We'll cover things to do as far as attractions, places to visit, maybe places to live if you're moving here to Central Florida. The world is our oyster. So really excited about getting into this, excited to start this podcast. So let's get it going. We're going to do all sorts of things on this podcast to help you plan your next trip to Orlando and the theme parks when you are visiting them. Yes, we'll talk about Disneyland. We'll talk about SeaWorld, Universal, Halloween Horror Nights, Hallow Scream, uh, Mickey's Not So Scary, all sorts of different things. We'll even jump across the globe uh, to talk about the things that are being added to other parks. And hopefully we'll visit those someday. So that way you can see us in those parks and we can talk more and give you more of an in-depth experience. But for this podcast, we're really just going to cover news, talk about some fun facts, maybe go through some history. Uh, we're going to have some guests on to talk about the different theme parks, things they're excited about. Um, so just let me know what you want to see, and then we'll, we'll kind of dump that into this podcast. I feel like it's a good place to kind of sit down every week and go in through the parks uh, and, and give you a lot more in-depth discussion because I feel like with the videos, it's not a whole lot of information. Um, I feel like it's very surface level. And I feel like the podcast can be a good avenue to talk to you all about things that are going on in and around the parks, maybe even talk about some of the things that they're doing or changes that are happening. But we're going to talk today and start today by talking about Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is now open at Disney's Magic Kingdom. And so let's get into it, talk about it. What are, what are our thoughts? Because we've gotten to write it before um, for the cast member preview. And then we'll talk a little bit about the storyline as well. Just a couple of weeks ago, we got to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Splash Mountain had always been one of our favorite attractions at Magic Kingdom and probably all of the parks. We really did enjoy Splash Mountain a lot, but we were really excited about it switching over to Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I think that representation is really important to the park and we finally get someone that represents a community that I think was lacking um, as far as representation across the parks. So we get Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It did open today, June 28th, and there were a lot of pictures from the parks this morning talking about the excitement. Um, we've got a video on Twitter or X uh, that we favorited that was from one of our uh, friends that are at the parks. Um, and honestly, I think it's a lot of cool things that are happening over at Magic Kingdom. Tiana's Bayou Adventure is probably one of the most stunning visually that I've seen in a long time as far as animatronics are concerned. I think they did a really nice job implementing screens, which isn't typical for Disney. They don't really lean into the screen game as much as Universal does, but Disney did a really nice job putting that into the ride to give you a better experience and for you to meet different characters that you probably wouldn't get to meet otherwise. And they really have a hard time kind of visualizing those characters for you that do show up on the screen. So it it's a way to be interactive that they haven't really used before. And I was really excited when uh, I got on the ride for the first time. But I just want to give you my overall thoughts. So walking through the queue line, you do get that Bayou feel. There's jazz inspired music, um, South uh, Southern inspired uh, music. You've got the folk music. Um, it's a band. So the the idea of the story is that you're going through and you're experiencing um, Tiana's story after the movie, a couple years after Tiana's palace has really taken off. Her business is doing really well. She's been very successful. People are enjoying her food. And she dreamed of this environment where it's lively, where there's music being played, where she can kind of sing and dance because she likes to do that. She likes that environment and she wanted to recreate that. So the goal of Tiana's Bayou Adventure is you're getting on these flume rides and you're going through the bayou looking for different band members. And along the way, you encounter band members that you probably wouldn't think 
of being band members. So the different critters of Bayou Adventure are going to be the ones that you're recruiting for this band. And as you go along, you can see the different characters that you see starting the ride, joining the different scenes, joining the band. So you're collecting these critters that play different musical instruments. And it really is a great piece of storytelling. So um, you're in charge of finding the band. You're like the recruitment. Um, you're not really uh, the, an audience member. You're more of the band manager. And you're trying to help Tiana and King Louie. Um, sorry, not King Louie. Louis. Um, King Louie is the wrong one. But Louie is also trying to help you out. And he, of course, can play musical instruments as well. But it is such a wonderful tribute to the movie that I think so many have grown to love with Princess and the Frog. Um, the Again, the theming, very bayou looking, uh, a lot of green. It's pretty dark. Um, I would say the, the lightning bugs uh, are probably my favorite part of the whole ride. So you'll see what I mean by that when you go through the actual attraction itself. But um, talking about Tiana's, I just wanted to show you uh, a picture of us on the attraction um, because I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, the, the drop down, it's pretty much the same. I think they've got a couple other elements. You do get soaked on this ride. It is pretty much the same ride experience as far as the feeling you get and the feelings you get. They haven't added any drops. They didn't add anything that was um, that I think was glaring as far as the ride is concerned or the ride vehicles. But um, I think you experience a very similar type of feeling with a new story, right? So... I think that's the point of Tiana's was to get a new story in, one that was uh, inclusive of all, one that was um, one of their favorite, or sorry, one of their best movies uh, they've produced in, in, a, in a while. Um, I thought Princess and the Frog did a really nice job of telling Tiana's story and, and um, implementing different pieces of storytelling that we really don't have with the Disney movies. Um, there's a lot of heart and soul in this. Um, there's a lot of uh, connection to feeling there is just this overriding sense of um, inclusivity and happiness and um, love that is poured into this movie, but also into this attraction. So you can see us here. Uh, we did get first row. Ash and I got first row. A lot of fun. Uh, we did get soaked. I do feel like we got even more wet than we would typically get on Splash Mountain. Uh, I don't know what that was all about. Usually in the front row, you, you do get a little bit more wet second row too, but it really did. It felt like we were getting soaked on this attraction, which is great for a hot day here in Florida. I'm sure it'll be a very popular attraction, um, but there's just so much to, to discuss because once you're going through the queue line, you're going through Tiana's palace, you're going through the kitchen, um, you're going down through the sand mines, you're trying to get down to the bayou where you can collect all these members of this band. Tiana's asking you for her, for your help. Um, I don't know. I, I just love this attraction so much. It's it's become my favorite attraction now at Disney World. Splash Mountain was there. Um, but with this new storyline, this it's such a better attraction for me. Uh, I, I really do feel like we've got a good story. Um, it's not that hard to follow. It really is you going through. You're seeing each of the members of the band that you're going to be recruiting and collecting for Tiana's big party that she's having with all of her guests at Tiana's Palace. And that end scene... Um, just phenomenal uh the attractor sorry the animatronics in that attraction are probably some of the best that we have here at walt disney world i think frozen ever after might have or might have had the best attractions into or uh, uh animatronics but once this ride came along we got a better version of what those animatronics were they went away from the screens on the faces to give them you know how they use the faces on screens to give them more animation well the way that the technology has advanced in those couple of years is insane. I mean, just looking at these uh, animatronics and Tiana's is, I mean, they look lifelike. It's kind of terrifying it. in some instances when, when Louie and them are dancing. They look like real, uh, well, they are real characters inside of these stories. So I, those are just my initial thoughts. Um, it is opening today. I haven't seen it go down like on Twitter. I'm following all the people that are there currently writing it. And there's not been any reports of it going down this morning um, or, or later this afternoon. Um, so, you know, into the evening, we'll see. But 
Um, as we kind of wrap up the day here, I, I think it'll be interesting to see just how much um, this ride stays up because it's had a hard time staying up when it's been in the cast member previews and the annual pass holder previews. The, the ride has gone down quite a bit. So I guess we'll see. It's getting later into the evening. The storms are starting to roll in. Um, so I, I, I do, I wonder, you know, because that ride will go down with lightning. I, I do wonder how it'll how it'll be impacted when there's so many guests trying to ride it because that's going to be the case for the next couple of couple of years to be honest with you so let's talk about some other things some details as far as like getting on the ride itself you know how do you how do you get onto the ride because it's a little different than what um maybe some of you might be used to that road splash mountain um this is a different ride and attraction in which and on how you enter the queue line so let's talk about that uh, and then we'll talk a little bit more uh, about the story and then we'll move on. But I just wanted to get on here and jump on here for um, opening day of Tiana's Bayou Adventure, just because I think it has had such a huge impact in the parks on Twitter. Everything I've read about it, uh, people are really enjoying it. So let's talk uh, again about getting onto the attraction because it's a little different. OK, so this attraction is different in the way that you enter a queue line. You don't just go to the standby. Uh, you can buy Lightning Lane for this attraction and Lightning Lane was available uh, as soon as it opened this morning. Um, and by early this morning, I think uh, they were selling out pretty quickly as far as Lightning Lanes were concerned. Um, it's pretty interesting to just kind of follow new attractions just because there's a limited amount of space. There's a limited amount of lightning lanes. There's, uh, you know, a limited amount of time to really ride this attraction. So you have to really plan accordingly. If you're coming down to Magic Kingdom or Disney World and you're wanting to ride the new attraction, getting onto Tiana's might not be as easy uh, as you might think. So let's get into why it's a little different. So with the new attractions that Disney has opened. So let me think. Tron, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind. And I believe, I want to say that's it for, at least right now, that are still running on a virtual queue. I don't remember if Remy's opened on a virtual queue and then moved to a standby. I don't think it did. Um, but it's typically for these bigger attractions and, and their newer attractions. Uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure will start with a virtual queue. They did not announce when that would go away. But Disney Parks Blog did announce that at some point, Disney would get rid of the lightning lane feature for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It would then go to a standby regular queue that we have. So I think the only two that will be remaining as far as lightning, or sorry, not lightning, virtual queue is uh, Cosmic Rewind and Tron. And I don't know if those will ever go away. Um, I know it's a, you know, the virtual queue is used for a reason. It's not just to keep people out of the ride. Uh, it is a good way for Disney to keep lines at a minimum um, and to give the people that are going to go and wait for this ride uh, the ability to do so. Because I think if they just open this into a standby right now, I, I could see this being like a two or three hour wait. And with a virtual queue, if you're fast enough to get into it, if you're lucky enough to get into these virtual queues, you have the advantage of coming when your boarding group is called. So what happens is you enter a virtual queue. So at 7 a.m. on the dot and 1 p.m. on the dot, you need to get into line for the virtual queue. Typically, you'd have to be at one of the resorts at more at one of the parks to do so. Um, but 7 a.m. I think is the one that you can do uh, outside of the parks, obviously, because they're not open. Um, so the 7 a.m. Uh, virtual queue, get online, get right in line at 7 a.m. And I'm telling you, what, at 7 a.m. and 30 seconds, the, the <laughs> virtual queue is filled. I mean, it, it's crazy. You have to refresh it right at 7. Uh, I've heard 6.58, 6.59, you can refresh it, refresh it, refresh it, and then that'll actually help you get into it. There's all sorts of different tricks that people are figuring out about the virtual queues because it happens with Tron. Um, I will say today, uh, earlier this morning, they, um, they did say that both, Tiana's Bayou Adventure and Tron virtual queue uh, were filled up at 701, both of them. So it's insane to me. Um, you know, you, you can book, I think, both virtual queues, if I'm not mistaken. So you can get uh, in line for both. Um, I, would, I do wonder how that works if you got the same boarding groups or times. I guess they do have an hour, I think, window to ride it. But basically, they call your boarding group. You have, I think, an hour to ride it. Um, mostly especially tron i don't know about 
I don't know if Tiana's is doing the hour one because I know Cosmic Rewind is doing. I'm pretty sure it's Tiana's at first will start to do the the one hour window, but I think Cosmic Rewind has learned that they can do it because people aren't trying to write it at night. Whereas I think Tiana and Tron, people will be trying to write it at night. So you have to write it within that hour window in which you get your boarding pass um, called. So uh, yeah, enter the virtual queue, get in the boarding uh, the boarding groups, um, and wait. Uh, I think people are waiting like hours to get onto it um, as far as a virtual queue. So you can do other things while you're waiting to get on the attraction itself. And then you can ride Tiana's for the very first time. Again, one of the best rides, probably my favorite in all of the world right now, not just Disney. Um, but yeah, just a couple of things. The, um, the shops are, one of them, is, one of them is opened. Um, I can't, I don't know if I have the name of the actual shop right outside of it. Um, but Critter Co-op is the shop that was Splash. No, Splashdown Photos was the one. So Splashdown Photos, there's a shop in there where you get your, you can purchase your ride photos, but they've got like drinks and um, some other merchandise, not anything crazy, usually like towels and hats uh, and then some merch from the ride. But the actual ride merchandise itself is going to go into a store um, that is right outside. So when you go over the bridge where the big drop is, there's a shop on the left-hand side as you go into the queue line to get it for uh, Tiana's My Adventure. And it's going to be called Critter Co-op. Critter Co-op, they've shared video. They're, I think they've had media days there. Definitely had media days there. They've done some previews on um, Disney Parks blog. They've also done some videos on social media for Critter Co-op. And Critter Co-op's adorable. It's that shop that used to be all splashed out, Splash Mountain merchandise. They had the rocking chairs in there. I think they had a, a checkers board. Checkers board? At one time, that sounded weird. Um, but it's that little shop right there just as you go over the bridge. And they're going to have all sorts of Tiana merchandise. Right now, uh, Tiana merch is being sold currently at um, uh, the Emporium up on Main Street. Um, there was somewhere else, I thought. Uh, or no, it might have been just the food. But the Emporium right now uh, has the... Yeah, Emporium right now has all the merchandise. And there's if you go on Twitter, you can actually see... People. So what Disney does now with the limited merch um, or like the new release merch that they know is going to be real popular, they have these huge lines that you get into and you wait like 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on how popular merch is. And the merch today looks super popular because it went from it went from Emporium and wrapped all the way around to the confectionery, all the way through that backstage area um, down Main Street. So on the right hand side where they usually do like the start of mickey's not so scary where you go and get your wristband and you get your first treats in the the gift bag um the treat bag if you go to the right hand side and then you pop out and you're right beside the plazas right here on the on the left and then uh, tomorrowland terrace is on the right um they're using that as a as an area to queue people up for this new uh, tiana's merchandise so i think it's probably an hour hour and a half wait for this merch uh, it is very popular. There's a lot of great stuff, though, um, per, specific to the actual ride itself. Pins, T-shirts, hats. Uh, I think they've got cups. I think they've got um, wall hangings. They've got all sorts of things. Open day, opening day merch. Like, the crowd is insane um, whenever uh, park attractions open for the first time because there's always tons of stuff added um, that people are that is exclusive. So you got to go get it that day. Um, and then they'll sell out, and then it won't come back. So... Uh, if you're not at Magic Kingdom or hadn't been Magic Kingdom today, as you're listening to this, then you probably missed out on some of the merchandise. But, I mean, you can you can go on eBay and see what you missed out on. It won't be in a favorable price because we do have a lot of resellers here, unfortunately, that'll, that'll purchase everything and not let people. But they usually do a good job now of limiting um, merchandise. It's just sometimes the resellers will bring two or three friends and then they you see them walk out with, you know, 20 bags of different merch that they sell on eBay and, and have no interest in actually keeping. So it's too bad. It's unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it goes. Um, a couple more things about Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Um, they are currently selling uh, her Tiana specialty beignets over at the Golden Oak Outpost. So if you're facing Splash Mountain down from Frontierland and you're right beside Pecos Bill, just around the corner uh, of Pecos Bill is going to be Golden uh, Oak Outpost. And it's a little like shack. It used to be, I think, where the temporary McDonald's was when the park first opened. Um, yes, there was McDonald's and uh, Magic Kingdom. It's pretty cool. But there's a little shack right there just to the left-hand side of Splash Mountain and right around the corner of Pecos Bill. And you can get her uh, beignets uh, drizzled with honey and powdered sugar. So let the good times roll. Grab some beignets. 
you probably should, I think you should be able to eat them in line leading up to, like, I don't see why not. Like, I think they'd let you eat them and, and take some drinks inside of the queue line and then just throw them away before you get on the attraction. I don't see what the problem with that would be. They're very messy, though. If they've got honey on them and powdered sugar, that's like a, that's a trick there. Um, it's hard to get stuff off that. But, yeah, so that's all I've got really on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Very excited to see um, what comes uh, for Tiana as far as the park is concerned, as far as maybe we get some more specialty food. I know they were talking about, like, different gumbos and different things being sold um, at some of the quick service restaurants that maybe when Pecos Bill got kind of a redo, um, as far as a menu, maybe they would have some kind of influence from that. Um, if they do expand the parks um, over at Magic Kingdom, I could see them adding something along the lines of like a Tiana's Palace that they have over in Disneyland. Um, that'd be cool to see if we could get a, a Tiana's inspired quick service restaurant or something like that. So I don't know. There's a lot of good things coming over in that part of the park. Um, they did talk. I mean, they've they've gotten the approval for a fifth park and expansion, a billion dollar expansion approval. Um, and there is a lot of rumors that that's what's going to happen. I don't know. Um, I, I don't really like to speculate as much, but that one was presented at D23. So I do feel like it's something that we can discuss and really get into. So I do feel like that might actually happen. And we'll get some extension of, of this land and um, more of Tiana's story. But so I got on Tiana's. Let's move on. Let's go to the ne next topic. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll start discussing something that affects Tiana's Bayou Adventure. All right. So this is some of the biggest news that we've gotten in a really long time. Uh, and we're going to we're going to change the slide over. And uh, this allows you to plan your trip and plan ahead better than ever before. Well, <laughs> since FastPass Plus, uh, because a new system is coming back coming coming back it's really strange so let's explain it so genie plus is no longer so uh you will be able to uh book this new service that is called uh the lightning lane service they got multi-pass and single pass we'll talk about what that means but they're getting away and uh, moving completely away from genie plus so that is no longer um rest in peace genie plus 2021 to 2024 did not last long um and Disney Parks blog wrote an article about this where they talked about just kind of things that they have been listening to. And this was one of them. Um, they said, we are listening and we heard you. You don't like the system. Well, Disney's going to change it. And it's gotten a lot better. I will say that. I really enjoy this new system that they're moving to because it is very similar to FastPass Plus. Now, I, I did wish they went to the FastPass Plus, and I saw an interesting, there's a, uh, I forget the guy's name, but there is a retired Imagineer that has his own YouTube show and I think podcast, and he was saying the reason why that Disney was not going to go back to FastPass Plus, because they probably would have, um, is because all the Lightning Lane signage <laughs> and things would have to be taken off of maps, above rides, um, at resorts, like there's all sorts of, you know, ads, billboards, like there's tons of lightning lane verbiage uh, out in the, out in the, the, what is it, the Disney verse. So they'd have to change everything. So they're just going to keep this and then add into the different graphics, different advertisements and marketing, um, the different levels, or I guess the two different passes that you get with lightning lane. Uh, I, I like the name lightning lane. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, especially here in Florida, lightning all the time. Uh, I guess you're not riding lightning lane rides with your lightning in the parks, but um, but I do like the name. So let's talk about what it means for uh, us as uh, guests to the Disney parks. So they've got multi-pass lightning. So it's called lightning lane multi-pass and lightning lane single pass. Lightning lane multi-pass is going to be able to be purchased for, or you'll be able to purchase it for one park a day. So how I'll explain this is if you are going to Magic Kingdom and you buy a Magic Kingdom Lightning Lane multi-pass, then you will book three experiences in Magic, well, up to three experiences in Magic Kingdom. I wonder, and we haven't been able to use it because it's not out yet. Um, it's coming soon. I think in July is when they were rolling this out. Um, I'll have to check back up in notes and see. July 24th. I knew it was July um, I just re couldn't remember if it was beginning of the month or end of the month. So anyway, multi-pass July, um, at the end of July, July 24th, you're going to be able to book. So you booked Magic Kingdom, right? 
and you got the Lightning Lane multi-pass, you'll book three experiences and you get three windows in which you'll be able to book uh, the different attractions and experiences. Now, they are going back to the Fast Pass Plus system where the tiered uh, attractions are going to take, or sorry, the attractions are going to be tiered where you pick uh, one attraction from the top group that is the more popular rides. And then you have a whole list of the second tier where you'll pick two rides from. So I'm going to go through the different uh, attractions that are on each of these tiers and talk a little bit about, so what does that mean for you as a guest if you're booking a Lightning Lane multi-pass? Because it is a little bit different than obviously Genie Plus, but it's pretty much the same as the old system, Fast Pass Plus. So let's talk about the tier system and, and what rides you'll be able to select with this multi-pass. Okay, so how does this work? Well, when you book one of these multi-passes, you're going to be able to select three experiences and three windows in which to do those three experiences. So for instance, in Magic Kingdom, you're going to have on the app, just like in Fast Pass Plus, you've got two different tiers. Uh, the first tier is going to be the most popular attractions at the certain park because they don't want you to select all three of their popular attractions because then that would just mess up the system and it becomes too uh, crowded in different queue lines and people select the same ones. So there wouldn't be any reason to buy a lightning lane because everybody would be selecting these big three attractions at the parks or at least have a lot in common where it's going to clog up the lines. So what they'll do is they'll do a tier system. The three experiences that you can book you pick one from tier one and then two from tier two. So in tier one, where you select one of these rides at Magic Kingdom, it's going to be Big Thunder Mountain, Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan's Flight, Space Mountain, and Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I told you this would have an impact on Tiana's and it does right away. So the multi-pass on July 24th, you're going to be able to book one of these experiences as part of your three. And then from the second tier, you're going to be able to select two different attractions. So that includes the Barnstormer, Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, Dumbo the Flying Elephant, Haunted Mansion, It's a Small World, Mad Tea Party, The Magic Carpets of Aladdin, The Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Monsters Inc. Lab Floor, Pirates of the Caribbean, Tomorrowland Speedway, and Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. Now notice, there's not any princesses or character meet and greets on the Lightning Lane multi-pass list. I think you might be able to buy uh, singular lightning lanes for these. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't find any details on that one. So if you know, leave that in the comments below. But again, on these multi-passes, it's a no-go for the characters, which I find very interesting. I thought maybe they were going to include that, but they didn't. And then there are going to be attractions that you cannot experience with lightning lane multi-pass, and you cannot use the multi-pass on a couple of attractions across the parks. It's their big attractions that you would uh, probably expect not to be uh, as part of this tier system. So not in the tiers and what you'll have to buy a single lightning lane pass for is the Seven Dwarves Mine Train and Tron Light Cycle over at the Magic Kingdom. So again, you cannot book that as part of your three experiences for the multi-pass, but you can buy the single individual lightning lanes for each of those attractions, Seven Dwarves Mine Train and Tron. Let's talk a little bit about Epcot because again, they've got a tier system and then they have a ride on there as well that you cannot book through a multi-pass. Okay, so let's talk Epcot's tier system. So in the first tier, again, you can only book one of these out of the three experiences and rival windows is Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and Soarin' Around the World. So that is tier one. And in tier two, you can select two of these and that is Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival, The Journey into Imagination with Figment, Living with the Land, Mission Space, The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Spaceship Earth, and Turtle Talk with Crush. The attraction that you cannot book with multi-pass is obviously Guardians of the Galaxy, Epic Rewind, but you can book a single Lightning Lane Pass for that attraction still. Let's move on to Disney's Hollywood Studios. So Disney's Hollywood Studios, Tier 1, you've got Mickey's Runaway Railway, or sorry, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith and Slinky Dog Dash. So again, tier one, select one. In tier two and select two, you get Alien Swirling Saucers, Beauty and the Beast Live on Stage, Disney Junior Play and Dance, the For the First Time in Forever, a Frozen Sing Along Celebration, Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular, Muppet Vision 3D, Star Tours, The Adventures Continue, The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, and Toy Story Mania. 
Those are the ones for Disney's Hollywood Studios. The one you cannot book is Rise of the Resistance, uh, which is in Galaxy's Edge. So let's move on to Disney's Animal Kingdom, and then we'll kind of wrap up this part on the new Lightning Lane system. At Disney's Animal Kingdom, Tier 1 includes none. <laughs> so there are no attractions in Tier 1. They're all in the same tier. Um, and that is Dinosaur, Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain, Feathered Friends in Flight, Vessel Lion King, Finding Nemo, the Big Blue, and Beyond. I forgot that changed their name. Um, it's Tough to Be a Bug, Cali River Rapids, Kilimanjaro Safaris, and Navi River, River Journey. So again, none of the attractions are in different tiers. They're all in the, the, the same tier. So you do get to book three of those to experience. The only one you cannot book a Lightning Lane multi-pass for is the Avatar Flight of Passage. Again, a single Lightning Lane will do for that ride. So let's uh, let's wrap this up and talk a little bit about my thoughts and going forward what this means for you all. This is a really huge move for Disney uh, and it is going to Disneyland as well, but I think it is much needed. We really needed to go back to a system that really was going to work to an advantage of a guest. Now, a couple things before you get it, get too much into this and go, all right, we finally got light, lightning lane and fast pass back um, as far as free. Well, it is not free. It's going to be behind a paid wall. I think it was like $20 and above um, is what they were expecting or what I had read on, on X. Um, so it is going to be about $20, I think, per person. Um, I don't see it being any cheaper than that, um, that you'll be able to add these uh, different experiences through a lightning lane experience. But again, behind a paywall, it's not free. It does not get included with your park stays, no matter what, whether you're staying at a resort or you're coming as an annual pass holder, or you're just buying a ticket uh, as a day guest, you do not get this included with your ticket. Uh, another thing, Disney Resorts, Swan and Dolphin, and Shades of Green, you all get seven days prior to plan your three experiences. So for instance, you will a week out get uh, email or you can go into and book Lightning Lanes with your tickets. Um, ahead of time, so a week ahead of time, so you don't have to wait till the day of to book your Lightning Lane experiences or a couple of days before or however it was before. And then annual pass and day guest, you all will be able to book your Lightning Lanes and the three experiences that you wanna try out or whatever it might be. You get to do that three days in advance leading up to your visit to the park. So this allows you to plan your day ahead. It allows you to book reservations for restaurants or different uh, excursions that you might be doing here at Walt Disney World or outside of Walt Disney World. This gives you an idea as to how to plan your day, when you're gonna be riding these attractions, when you can eat, when you can go back to the pool and rest, when you can take a nap, it, it allows you to do a lot again. And so that was really exciting. Guests were really upset that they have not, they didn't really have control on their day because Genie Plus didn't really let you control it. It kind of just gave you the, here's when you should ride this or this lightning lane is here and then there's another one that's you know three hours away and you have to kind of just hang out and just sit there so this allows you to plan your day ahead of time um, so i'm really excited about that uh, and i think ultimately this is the the step in the right direction for disney i love 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 fast pass plus i really think this is a great one too um, the only difference is obviously the pay so um, definitely worth it if you're booking and definitely if you're coming for the first time, do Lightning Lane, do the multi-pass because it'll be well worth your money to get on these attractions without much of a wait. And then you can wait in other lines or attractions that where you can get as much done as you can possibly can on your visits because it's very expensive to come to these parks. So we're done talking about Genie Plus being retired uh, and we're talking, uh, we just talked Lightning Lane. We're going to move on, talk about something else, but Again, very excited about this. So Disney World has some 4th of July treats that are coming obviously next week to celebrate the 4th of July. They start usually on Monday, July 1st and run through the weekend about July 5th or right after July 4th. Um, so you can grab some of these sweet treats or um, I guess savory treats, uh, if you call them that maybe, <laughs> depending on what's on them. But we're gonna talk about Walt Disney World's. Um, Disneyland also has treats, but we're gonna focus mainly on Walt Disney World because that's where we are. We will talk a lot of Disneyland things on here, but sometimes the treats and different things like that on such short notice is something that probably won't cover as much just because we don't live out there. We're not going to go try these, but if you want, uh, we'll start to do more of those. We'll try to sprinkle those in more, but it, it was going to take too much time to do everybody's different treats. We will talk a little bit about Disneyland uh, in a couple of uh, segments later, but 
wanted to talk about Walt Disney World treats uh, just because they're here. Fourth of July things have arrived and I'm very excited to get in there and try some of these as well. So um, I think we're going to go towards the resorts um, this Sunday. Uh, and I'm thinking we we'll, we might be able to grab some of these. So <laughs> I guess we'll see. Um, but yeah, for the July treats, here they come. I'll read a little bit about them. So at Magic Kingdom Park at the Liberty Square Market, available June 30th through July 6th, red, white, and blue slushy, frozen Fanta blue raspberry, and Fanta cherry layered with whipped cream and topped with popping candies. So that is a new uh, drink or beverage or whatever you want to call that. I guess a Smoothie, slushy, what do they call it? Slushy. Okay. <laughs> Sleepy Hollow available June 30th through July 6th through their mobile order. You're going to be um, able, it is more, sorry, mobile order available. It's also available to go up to the counter again. Red, white, and blue funnel cake, funnel cake topped with mixed berries, vanilla ice cream, and festive sprinkles. They just did a revamp of the whole menu over at Sleepy Hollow. It's waffle based, not like waffle sandwich based now. So definitely check out the new menu, menu items there, but also get this one if you're having, uh, if you're going over to the park next week for 4th of July. On to the next treat. Uh, we've got at Disney's Hollywood Studios at Pizza Rizzo, June 30th through June, July 31st. So this one's available for a little bit longer. Mickey Apple Pie Cupcake a yellow cupcake filled with apple pie topping um, topped with salted caramel buttercream and cinnamon streusel and garnished with rainbow silver sparkle and red white and blue uh, mickey ears i gotta try that i love apple pie and that'd be great woody's lunchbox is going to have this tart so you've seen these tarts before but this one's the fourth of july lunchbox tart it is available from june 30th to july 31st it is mobile order available you can get a cherry filled um Top or it's cherry filled tart topped with vanilla fondant and star sprinkles. Yeah, that's a hard, that's sometimes these are hard to say for me, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited because the tarts are usually pretty good too. Uh, cherry pie, that'd be fun. So very summer based sweets and treats here uh, at Disney World for the 4th of July celebration. Um, and then you've got the next treats uh, and that is going to be focused on the resorts themselves. Um, so over at the resorts, you've got at Contempo Cafe and Gasparilla Island Grill. Um, those are the Grand Floridian Contemporaries um, restaurants. Contempo Cafe is uh, Contemporaries Quick Service, and then Gasparilla is Grand Floridians. Um, they're going to have the 4th of July cheesecake, strawberry, Bavaroi, Roy. What? How? I don't know how to say that word. Lemon cheesecake and blueberry chiffon cheesecake. Okay, um, don't know what that word is. Never heard that word. That's interesting. Bob, Baba Ro, no, no idea what that is. <laughs> available at various Disney Resort hotel quick service restaurants, uh, available June 30th through July 6th. The red, white, and blue uh, brownie, sorry, the red, white, and brownie, uh, red velvet brown butter brownie with cream cheese icing and graham streusel and caramel. Uh, these are available at Intermission, which is uh, Intermission Food Court at Disney's All-Star Music. You've got End Zone Food Court at All-Star Sports. You've got Landscape of Flavors at Art of Animation, Center Town Market at Caribbean Beach, Spyglass Grill at Car or Caribbean Beach as well. Everything Pops Shopping, obviously at Pop Century, Riverside Mill Food Court at Port Orleans Riverside, and Sasagulu Float Works at Port Orleans French Quarter. So you're going to be able to get these treats at some of your favorite resorts. And then over at Epcot, Regal Eagle Smokehouse uh, Drafts Beers uh, and Barbecue, available June 30th through July 7th, Barbecue Pulled Pork, or sorry, Barbecued Pulled Chicken Sandwich. Wow, chicken, all right. Um, with house-made pickles, coleslaw, and an onion ring on a, a brioche bun. So a savory one to kind of top off the treats as far as the sweet treats are concerned. Got to have some savory in there. And then over at Disney Springs, you've got Amaretz, uh, which is going to have this now through July 8th, is the 4th of July Minnie Mouse Dome 
white chocolate and strawberry mousse with vanilla chiffon cake. Uh, and then you got over the ganache wreath, stars and stripes, mini chocolate pinata, dark chocolate shell filled with popping candy chocolate, I'm sorry, candy chocolate bark. So that little hammer you use it, you smash it a little thing. Have you ever been in that ganache -ry? It's a little fun uh, trick that they do to bash that open and get some of the sweet treats that you will get. Um, but I think that does it for our treats. I'm kind of scrolling through here. Um, again, we're not really covered Disneyland just because it's happening within the next week. When I release this, they'll pretty much be out. And when you're listening to this, they'll probably be out as well. Disney World, because we're over here and we might try some of these. I just wanted to kind of focus on um, where we're, we're located. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about Disneyland coming up here soon because there's a lot to announce. And by soon, I mean they're up next. So let's talk Halloween at Disneyland. 13 things that are returning or are new uh, to the Disneyland Resort and the, the two parks over there. The first thing that was announced is that the um, overlay for Jack and Sally and the Nightmare Before Christmas is coming back to Disneyland's Haunted Mansion. Now, one thing that's different is they did announce a virtual queue, so you will have to join a virtual queue to ride this attraction this year. And you can see the different uh, outfits that Minnie and Mickey are going to be wearing as well as their friends. So they did get some new themed costumes over at Disneyland. So definitely check that out this fall if you're over at the two parks. Mickey's Trick and Treat, which is the show over at Disney's, uh, or sorry, at the Disney Theater in Disney California Adventure. You can actually see some new projections, some different dancing, some songs, um, and some different costumes. And for the first time ever, they're going to be offering this show daily to Disneyland guests. So if you're at the Disneyland park, um, you're at Disney California Adventure, you can head over to the theater and check this out. Halloween Screams is returning to Disneyland's castle. This is the nighttime spectacular out, uh, I guess, behind and in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. Uh, and it is going to be a uh, projection on Sleeping Beauty Castle. It's a small world, rivers of America and along Main Street, USA. So not a bad sight throughout the parks. I know that a lot of people like to watch them back by Small World, the fireworks, because it's a little bit more um, intimate with the fireworks, but you don't see the projections on the castle. So they started adding them to different places. I think that's brilliant. I think Magic Kingdom should start to do that at Disney World. But yes, this is going to be um, a nighttime spectacular that is going to be on select nights over at Disneyland. Seasonal decor is uh, returning to Disneyland as well. So you've got the Main Street Pumpkin Festival and the Headless Horseman over at Disney's California Adventure. A lot of pumpkins, a lot of fall theme and decor will be seen throughout the parks. So if you're in those two parks, you can definitely get your pictures, um, take your treats over by some of those fall decor and enjoy the beautiful weather. I know it cools off quite a bit over in Disneyland uh, compared to Disney World. So you can actually enjoy a fall. Um, but I, I love what Disneyland does with their parks for the Halloween season. I can't wait to get out there. I think we're going to try to get out there in the next couple of years for Halloween or at least fall to see the decor. But I, I love this. And I love that the Headless Horseman kind of kicks off the night at Disney California Adventure um, by illuminating his head. Um, and that starts kind of that spooky night feeling that you get during the fall. But I love this. I love seasonal decor at the park. Aviator Springs uh, is getting an overlay as well. Mater's Graveyard Jam Boorie, and then you got Luigi's Honkin' How, or sorry, Hall Owing. So kind of like you're hauling things around because they're cars. That's a lot of fun. Um, the next, sorry, we got to flip through some photos here. Um, so for the videos, I do apologize, but that is what this looks like. Um, I didn't switch it over for the uh, last couple of videos, but <laughs> here is uh, the uh, overlay and the decor that is coming to Radiator Springs this fall at Disneyland. So uh, I, I love that. I can't wait to see that in person. I think that would be a lot of fun. And then you, over at Guardians of the Galaxy, you got Monsters After Dark, Sparks Screams, um, and that is going to be Monsters After Dark, um, and they're going to unleash some monsters, and you actually have to get Groot. Um, Ro Rockets task you with the, um, uh, the job to go get Groot and save him from the monsters that they've released, and that is the seasonal overlay at Guardians of the Galaxy. Then you have some merchandise. Uh, I don't know if this is new merchandise. I think this was last year's merch um, because they did say that you need to start checking DisneyStore.com as new merch will be released. Um, and I do believe that I saw this stuff last year on Twitter. So I don't know. Merchandise coming soon as well as different eats. So I'm assuming these two uh, items are coming back, but they're also going to release different menus and festive items that are coming to the parks. 
later on as we get closer and closer to the fall, which is relatively soon. I think, uh, I want to say, when did I say this started? August 23rd. So, I mean, within the next month, we should have a release of the different treats that are coming to the parks for the fall on both coasts. New merchandise, we went through that. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was Plaza de la Familia celebrates Dia de los Muertos. It is coming back. It run, It's running from um, the fall season starting in August, uh, when I just said the date, I can't remember, August 23rd, all the way through November 2nd. So this is one of the last things that'll be around for the fall. So check that out. Coco inspired over at Disney California Adventure. And then the next thing is Gooby's Kitchen and Storytellers Cafe will serve up some festive fare. So the different treats shops are, are going to have fall treats. Um, so definitely head in and check those out if you like uh, Storytellers Cafe, which is a, a nice little place to stop and eat. And then Goofy's Kitchen, which is more the, the candy kitchen. Um, so definitely get to those if you do like your Halloween inspired things. Last but certainly not least, um, a couple things, I guess. Uh, Pluto's Pumpkin Pursuit is returning, so you'll be able to see that throughout the whole resort. So they're going to return to Downtown Disney, Disneyland Park, and California Adventure. You're going to be able to find Pluto's Pumpkins. And then Boogie Boogie Bash, a Disney Halloween party. Um, tickets are on sale starting... They've already started. <laughs> if you haven't bought them, you might have trouble for Oogie Boogie Bash because they go out quickly. And they just uh, released all guests yesterday. So I'd, I'd be interested. I didn't check. But I would say that Oogie Boogie Bash, uh, the party nights and tickets have sold out completely for some of the nights, if not all already. But uh, you will get the return of Frightfully Fun Parade, Villains Grove at Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, and uh, some new immersive uh, experiences on the tree trails with other villains. And then, um, yeah, it looks like that's all it's going to be. It's the typical Oogie Boogie Bash. Can't wait to see what that's all about because we've not yet experienced that. And I always hear it's probably the best Christmas, or sorry, Christmas, Halloween parties at uh, Disneyland and, and all the resorts around the world. So looking forward to getting out to that. But that was the 13 things that Disneyland Resort uh, released to the public and there will be more to come over the next month or so and we'll try to talk about those as soon as they pop up i'm assuming we're getting treats and things like that coming very soon for both parks for halloween um so i'm interested to see what those look like but that'll do it for disneyland now we're going to move on to our next segment and talk a little bit about halfway to the holidays because at walt disney world there was an announcement uh of a couple things that are coming to the parks for the christmas season so Disney did announce the return of Jollywood Nights, and it is the second year in which it takes place at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It runs from November 9th through December 21st, and it is on select nights, uh, offering guests an evening filled with sensational um, seasonal decorations, live entertainment, and a new dazzling spectacular um, that involves skating. So interested to see what that's all about i think it's going to be right there in front of the chinese theater it's the only place i can think of that has enough space for a skating spectacular first time they've ever done that it is hot i don't know how this all works i don't know how skating works in florida i guess we're going to find out um but that'll be very very interesting to see um coming to disney's hollywood studios um i think it'd be a lot of fun Mickey's not, there's Mickey's not so scary. Mickey's Very Merry will be returning as well. You also have the Festival of uh, the Holidays returning to Epcot. You have uh, the different festive, or sorry, the different Christmas things happening at Disney's Animal Kingdom and at the resorts. They're going to be decked out in their holiday decor as well. Um, so all, all the things are happening here for the holidays. Um, those are kind of the things that I wanted to discuss, but the, the biggest thing was that skating spectacular for Jollywood Nights. I can't wait to see what that's all about. I think we might try to go this year. I don't know. Um, it, it is quite expensive. I think it's like $130, $150, I think is what the range is. It's, it's pretty darn expensive now for the, for the Christmas parties um, and Halloween parties. But I think we'll try to go out to this one. But this was all announced uh, as part of their halfway to the holidays. So again, the biggest thing that's changing besides obviously merchandise is that spectacular over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And I can't wait to see if there's more information or anything new coming to the Christmas party at Magic Kingdom, Mickey's Very Merry. And maybe there's some different additions to the festival of the holidays because they've got different areas now. So looking forward to that. But once those are announced, 
Uh, we'll get on here and talk about those. But that's all I really know for now is just that new addition. And some more Disney news before we head off into uh, another company is the Inside Out 2 box office will reach $1 billion, uh, hopefully this weekend. It's projected to hit this weekend. Um, $858.8 million as of recording on Friday. Um, so it's got a couple of days to jump into that billion dollar mark, which I think it will. I think it was on pace to do it by Sunday. Uh, after 12 days in domestic release, the blockbuster sequel is the number 10 animated film of all time in North America, passing the Minions, The Rise of Gru, Finding Nemo, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The next animated film that it will overtake domestically is Disney's Frozen, um, the original Frozen. Worldwide, um, it will pass the $1 billion mark, um, and it, that's amazing. This feat of especially because the first one was so good and then the sequel is not as much, um, they're not as good usually, um, but it's it's making more money than the original. It's going to pass that and it's going to fly and continue flying up um, the rankings as far as animated films of all time in North America. So well done to the Inside Out crew. Well done to Kelsey Mann who directed it. Um, this was a great film. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check it out. But I just wanted to drop that in there just because it just keeps climbing and climbing um, as we get further and further into uh, its release. It's only 12 days out and it's made this much money. I think they said there was a budget of 200 million. Um, so this thing is, is churning out money left and right. Uh, and I'm excited to see that because it is a really great film. We're done with Disney. Let's move on to Universal Studios and SeaWorld because there's a couple of announcements uh, from those two. Universal Studios Orlando is bringing back Pass Holder Nights. Pass Holder Nights uh, are a after hour event that allow you to experience the park with less crowds. Um, you get food, drinks, different things. I don't think it's complimentary from what I remember. I think it's, you have to purchase them, but it's a, a limited size crowd that goes to the parts. You can do different experiences um, and it eliminates kind of that crowd level that um, is here during the summer. So looking forward to that. You can start uh, reserving your spots for those two nights on July 24th. And those nights are August 16th and August 17th or Friday, Saturday, when those universal annual pass holder nights are. And on July 24th, again, at 11 p.m., or sorry, 11 a.m., you can register up to eight pass holders when signing up for Universal Annual Pass Holder Night. Another announcement, eighth house was announced for Universal Studios HHN 33, and it was Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, a bone-chilling new specter, uh, has escaped from an ancient artifact, and he'll stop you cold. The Ghostbusters team, uh, you, sorry, you must team up with a Ghostbusters team to save you and the rest of the world from the second Ice Age. Looking at the trailer, it looked great um, as far as the house is concerned. Uh, Universal does a nice job with the trailers and getting you excited for the different houses coming to the event. So if you haven't seen that, head over to their socials and check that out because it looked like a fantastic uh, addition to this year's event. Again, we, we've got eight houses. We've got two more left. So uh, waiting on the Universal Monsters announcement. And then there's going to be probably one more IP that's announced, um, but we're still waiting on the official word of what that is. Uh, and then last, but certainly not least, is the Mega Movie Parade, which is going to be uh, a parade that features your favorite characters leaping off screen into the streets for a daytime parade. Feel the roar of a T-Rex, enjoy the adventure of E.T., embrace your favorite colors and characters from Trolls and more. On select days from July 3rd to July 10th, uh, pass holders can enjoy Universal Mega Movie Parade from an exclusive viewing area just outside Mel's Diner at Universal Studios, Florida. Limited space, so first come, first serve. Head over to the app to check out when those parade times are. And then again, that's next week, July 3rd is when that starts. So a very busy time. Make sure you get over there and get in line as soon as possible to experience this new daytime parade at Universal Studios. It comes out right at Mel's. It's going to be a great viewing area. It'll come out and you'll be able to see it for the first time and pretty much before anybody else. So that's pretty awesome. Let's move over now to SeaWorld because they've announced uh, their new roller coaster and when it opens and it does open uh, in the coming week or so. Uh, I'll be out of town next week so I won't be able to record a podcast um, and we'll kind of take a break with July 4th because there's a lot going on and people aren't really around the screen. So we'll all take a break. But on July 7th, SeaWorld is going to open up uh, their new roller coaster. So let's talk a little bit about Penguin Trek. Penguin Trek is opening on Sunday, July 7th, and it is a 3,020 foot track that winds through indoor and outdoor environments, presenting a series of twists and turns. 
Park officials said the true height uh, highlight of the penguin trek awaits guests at the end of the ride as they find themselves immersed in the confines of a penguin habitat. So it's going to take you to the Antarctica part where you go through the penguin attraction or the penguin part of the uh, actual the, the attraction itself, where you get to go into their habitat and see them, um, which we all love penguins, right? <laughs> so this is a family coaster, um, 42 inch height requirement. So that's not that tall, uh, which is great for the kiddos. Two launches. So it's a launch family coaster. We don't really have many of those. 43 miles per hour at the top speed and 65 max height, as you can see on the graphic. This, this looks great. It uh, looks like a lot of fun. It doesn't look too much or too intense for somebody like me that's got like motion sickness. So I think I'll be able to do this one. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it because I really do enjoy uh, a roller coaster. I just don't like getting sick and I, I get sick on them because I get motion sickness. But I, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, annual pass uh, holders. Uh, are allowed to ride the attraction starting July 2nd. Um, I think uh, that's next Tuesday, I want to say. Um, I think Tuesday they're opening up. Uh, I saw media was there today. Annual pass holders, I think, are July 2nd, July 3rd, maybe, and like 4th. I don't know. I know they start next week. I think it's July 2nd when the annual pass previews were. Um, so you can probably just go up to this attraction and see if it is opening because I know they're doing some soft openings and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to Penguin Trek. Uh, SeaWorld has become the is becoming and has become the the roller coaster capital of Orlando. I want to call them. Um, they're really focusing their attention on um, sort of some more of this rehabilit rehabil re that rehabilit I cannot speak rehabilitation parts <laughs> of animal care. Uh, which I enjoy because I think that's what the park should be about. And it is changing and ever so changing. Their food festivals are some of the best food festivals in all of Orlando. Uh, their attractions are starting to become some of the best roller coasters in all of Orlando. So definitely head to SeaWorld if you haven't, um, because they've got a new attraction opening up and you can ride with some penguins. So looking forward to that. Um, and that's pretty much going to do it for the SeaWorld portion and uh, the podcast itself. So Let's close out our first episode. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed that first episode. A lot of news heavy uh, and a lot of information heavy stuff um, just because we're kind of launching into this and getting a feel. I wanted to get the first episode out there, kind of get a feel for it. I liked it somewhat. Uh, I think next time we'll get more, a little, or sorry, we'll get a little bit better with the screens. I know uh, I had a hard time changing out pictures sometimes because I'm just not used to operating that and doing the speaking, which is why it'd probably be better if I did get a guest eventually. Um, so if you're interested in joining me on this podcast as a co-host or as a guest, let me know. I'm, I'm definitely open to all sorts of different things. Love talking theme parks. I'll do a lot of the legwork and editing, but uh, it would be great to have somebody on here to talk to and not have to go on and on. And you have to hear my voice all the time. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that first episode. Um, one last thing that I always want to do before we head out is I want to give you a park fun fact. And with that, I think it would be very appropriate to go to our first water flume ride ever created um, because Tiana's Bayou Adventure is a flume ride and a flume ride is one of those boat rides where you get in one of those logs and you ride down and splash down into different water elements. Uh, it's kind of how that's explained um, and defined. But the fun fact that I have for you all today, do you guys know when the first flume ride in the history of flume rides opened and where was it? So I'll give you a little, a little bit of time here to kind of think about it. I love flume rides. I'm really excited about Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We've got some great flume rides here in Orlando. Um, I wanted to check them out. And I'm hoping to go over to the oldest one that's ever been, uh, at least that has been recorded uh, in history. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all about. But it is called El Aceradero. El Aceradero. <laughs> it's Spanish for the sawmill or the mill. Um, so the mill, uh, it, the name of it is, um, it fits because uh, back in the day, um, an old mill, it was an old mill ride um, that this was considered. Um, and that's why it became uh, called the El Aceradero. Um, and it is a flume ride over in Six Flags over Texas. I got that name right, right? <laughs> I thought that was strange the way that it was worded, but it is not Six Flags over Texas is what it, what the actual theme park is called. And it opened, uh, which is uh, what I found to be very fun. Um, it opened in 1963. So it was the first flume ride in operation um, over uh, any park. And so it is still standing today. 
at Over Texas Six Flags. Uh, so I can't wait to ride it one day. I, I've watched some of the ride vehicle ride experience POV stuff, and it is your old classic flume ride. And my oh my, have they changed? <laughs> uh, I know Disney's been a big part of that um, with changing the attraction experiences. But again, uh, just to kind of give you some uh, some background and or I guess uh, kind of an idea of how old these are, this. Flume ride from 1963 is older than Walt Disney World here in Orlando. So 1963, first flume ride, El Aceradero, um, which is over again at uh, in Texas, in Arlington, Texas, called Over Texas. And it is their Six Flags Resort. So there's a fun fact. I know I just kind of stumbled through that one. I was a little bit better prepared, but the name kept throwing me off. But uh, yeah, 1963. Are you shocked? Um, do you like flume rides? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and then kind of share if you've ever been on some of these flume rides. What's your favorite flume ride? Um, is there one throughout the, the parks that you like? Some throughout the U.S., maybe some in the other parts of the world that you've been on? Um, but leave those in the comments below. I always like to hear that. Uh, which ones should we ride? Have you ever read, or sorry, ridden uh, El Aceradero over at Six Flags? Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me for this first episode. A lot of fun. I know some rambling. Um, I get a little bit more winded as we get further and further into the podcast. I know I start to speak a little bit quicker, but uh, we will get better. Uh, this is just kind of my first run through. I used to do a podcast for this one, but it was a lot less of this and more of just kind of rifting through a couple things. But I wanted this to be more informational. I want to um, definitely do a better job with this one. So let me know in the comments below. Did you enjoy some of the stuff? What do you hope to add to this podcast? What do you want to see in this podcast? Are there certain parks that we miss that you want to see more of? Um, I know I'm trying to touch on Disneyland and other parks around the world. It's just more difficult because we are located here in Central Florida. So it's going to be heavily focused on the parks here in Florida. Um, but we'll talk about some of the big parts that are coming to Disneyland, um, California, and then Disneyland overseas. Um, we'll talk a lot about Universal Hollywood and Universal overseas as well. Um, but those are going to be a lot of the main focus on the other parks that we focus on. Other ones are going to get kind of this, you know, treatment that SeaWorld did towards the end of the show where we, where we throw in some extra things. Um, but then we'll also be doing other things in Central Florida, and we'll just kind of see where this podcast goes. Is it interesting to you? Do you like hearing about SeaWorld? Do you like hearing about Universal and Disney in the same podcast? Do you want different separate feeds for each of them? Like, how do you want to do this? We can break it up in a numerous, or sorry, numerous ways. We can separate them. We can put them on different feeds, whatever it might be. Just let me know how you how you feel about the flow of it. Um, and as we get going, we'll get more of a flow and we'll, we'll keep putting them together for now, but definitely let me know what you're interested in, in seeing um, going forward. But if you want to reach out to us, um, we are We Met Behind the Castle over on YouTube. We Met Behind the Castle over on TikTok. Um, I'm pulling up X because we're a little bit different over there. It's called or it's at Behind Castle because we met Behind the Castle, I think it was taken. So we are at Behind Castle over on X. Facebook, we met Behind the Castle. You can email us at we met Behind the Castle at gmail.com and like, rate, and subscribe us on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Um, like us on YouTube, share us with your friends. And then also let me know, slide into the DMs if you want to join as a host or if you want to join as a guest. Uh, I'm always welcome to uh, listen to you and we can get together and, and get onto an episode together and see how the chemistry is and talk a little bit about theme parks, which I always love to do. But thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we will see you guys next time.